This is a comparison video for Manchu bows. I wanted to test the different angles of the ears, how they affect the force draw curve and therefore the amount of stored energy in the bow. To do so, I manufactured several uh, quarter scale plastic bows. That way I could have same width and thickness, only change the angles of the ears. See how they fan out. I've tested them and collected the data. Um, if you look at the recurve bow, a recurve bow, bow works like two bows in one. So you have one short bow from string bridge to string bridge and one long bow from knock to knock. When you start to pulling back the bow string, you only have the small bow. Uh, when you pull the string to a certain length, here it's about 15 centimeters, and the string lifts off the string bridge, you get a long bow and now you have leverage and that way you can flatten out the force draw curve which is what I'm gonna show next this is the first force draw curve this is for the bow model MM58 uh, MM58 stands for miniature Manchu 58 and 58 refers to the ear angle of 58 degrees uh, this is a standard uh, form for four straw curves I added some extra things like ear angle breaking point is the point where uh, the ears engage for this bow it's uh, at 18 centimeters and we also have leverage effect uh, which is the incline after the enga engagement of the ears uh, divided by the incline before so how much effect they have and for this bow it's a 61 percent and for all of them they are between 61 and 65 this is the only number that won't change between the bows it's the same i'm gonna go through the bows really quickly you can pause them if you want to look at the raw data but we're gonna move on to the comparison there are five different bows all with different angles of the ears they are 3D printed out of PLA plastic. They are made in quarter scale. They aren't perfect, but they did provide good data. You can pause the video uh, if you want to look at the data. Otherwise, we will continue directly with the comparison charts. Here is the comparison for all the bows. As you can see, it's uh, a kind of nice looking chart. Uh, all of them follow the same line at the beginning and that's because before the ears of the bow have engaged you have the same short bow the short bow doesn't know about the ears until they have engaged with the leverage effect uh, so they follow the strain line upwards and you can see all the breaking points I've also have a small uh, table down below where you can find points like breaking point here and you have all the different names for the bows. Uh, if we compare the energy of these, uh, energy is measured with grams multiplied by centimeters. You convert this. You can convert this per joule if you want to, but there's no point to them because we only compare them to each other, and the difference would be the same. Uh, you can see that the one with the highest peak draw weight stores the most energy which is mm58 and then it goes down to mm43 mm35 29 and 13 which is to be expected uh, i didn't mention it before but the area underneath a force draw curve is the amount of stored energy uh, you calculate the integral so to me uh, you want to increase the area below to get more energy into your bow and the thing about Manchu bow, you shoot such a heavy projectile, so you reach 99%. So uh, the main benef benefactor of if you want more speed in your arrow is to improve the efficiency or improve the uh, integral of the bow. To compare these to each other, though, we need to have the same draw weight because now all of them have different draw weights. So we're going to upscale these four bows 43 55 19 and 13 so they end up with the peak draw weight of 235 grain 
Uh, I've done that with math. I also did that by building new bows with my thicker limbs. Uh, it scales perfectly because uh, mechanical advantage is physics and physics don't care about scale. It works in the same way. So I have a new chart for the upscale bows. Now we can see all of them end at 235 grams. Uh, we can also see on the other time table with stored energy that the one with most energy is MM35. That's because MM35, the green one, uh, the breaking point for that point bow is at uh, 13 centimeters. And 13 centimeter is uh, the point in the middle of 5 and 22 centimeters. It would be 13 and a half, a little bit above you, then it would have even more energy. And that means you have built up energy for half your draw and you have flattened out the curve for the other half of the draw. And then you have the most amount of stored energy in your bow. Um, we can also see for the other bows, they are mirrored around this. So if you compare MM13, the purple one, and MM58, the blue one, they are mirrored across this plane. They are inverted to each other. And we look at the energy chart, 55 and 13 almost has the same amount of energy. Uh, the difference would be we have a little bit of stacking up here at close to the full draw and the opposite uh, in the beginning of the draw. We build up a lot of energy in the beginning of the draw. So therefore the bow uh, with the sooner breaking point would be, would be storing more energy. And it's the same thing for MM29, the yellow one, and MM43, the red one. They are mirrored across the plane, and the lower one has a little bit more energy because we build up more energy in the beginning, and you lose a bit of energy in the end. Uh, and you don't want a bow with a breaking point this late. This was just to show this uh, phenomenon, because a bow with a breaking point all the way up here at where are we? We are at 15 and 18 centimeters. Uh, that bow would be very unstable. The bow would unstring very easily and it would break and who knows where the arrow ends up. Uh, but of all of these, the strong, the most powerful bow would be MM35. I also have some other thoughts and that is if you imagine a bow with the most amount of energy that's possible, the energy would increase uh, completely vertically up like this, and then it would flatten out completely horizontal like this, and uh, the stored energy would be complete square. Here. You can't get any more energy like this than this, uh, but it's not possible to build a bow like this. This would mean that the ears should engage immediately, you know, 0.1 millimeter after initial draw that's very soon and then would uh, flatten out com completely horizontal but this should be a goal we should get as close as possible to this so in the next experiment i'm gonna test the different length of the ears and i'm gonna add length until the manche bow is as uh, long as uh, english longbow because that's the longest bow that's wieldable Other, uh, over that you can't really handle the bows because you will hit the ground or you know you can't wield them but we might get something that looks a little bit more like this I'm still exaggerating but yeah something like that then you have a even more energy and then after that probably gonna look at efficiency I mentioned that all bows uh, all mancha bow you shoot at 99% but, but that's because you shoot such heavy arrows often 50 grain per pound. If you have a more efficient bow, you can lower this limit. So you might be able to shoot a 14 grain per pound or 13 or 12 grain per pound if you improve efficiency. And if you lower uh, the weight of the arrow, you will also have faster arrows. Same amount of energy since this 99%, but you will also have, they will be much faster. But that's for uh, future experiments. Yeah.